In dealing with um, parasites, the first thing is to avoid them. So if you're feeling weak or vulnerable or sick, then it's not good to go into a place where there are lots of parasites. There are certain places which tend to be swarming with these parasites, so they're good to avoid. In general, it is um, in places where people are weak or suffering, um, they tend to attract a lot of parasites. So don't go to places where there used to be a concentration camp. Uh, old battlefields, um, insane asylums, also hospitals, um, also places where um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, drug use, um, especially heavy drug use like heroin. Um, so these places tend to be quite swarming with parasites and even after such a place has been abandoned for a while there might still be quite a few parasites left laying dormant um, waiting for a new prey to come along. So these are places to avoid. Other places which uh, have a very high parasite count is places where people cannot be themselves, where they're in a way in a constant process of repressing their own personality, their own feelings, their own emotions. So if you have um, uh, a place where everybody is supposed to behave in a very certain way, like everybody has to be a little office clone or to uh, obey the rules and there is little room for personal feelings, personal creativity, uh, these places also tend to be swarming with parasites. So often um, yeah, offices, um, um, places where people have to deal with customers, so customer service centers, um, government ministries, uh, places where in a way the interaction is very regulated and there is not really room to be yourself, to be human. Um, these places tend to be also quite full of parasites. If you do pick up a parasite, you might notice that your mood is changing or your thoughts are changing or certain memories are yeah, coming forward um, for yeah, no reason and if basically you are a healthy person then uh, one of the things you can do to get rid of them is basically to find another prey for them. Um, for instance when I was um, uh, living in Amsterdam one of my students showed up and she had um, picked up quite a bit of parasites and um, so I told her okay well there are various ways to get rid of them but the easiest one is just to um, go over to the bar on the corner and just look in for yeah two minutes and then come back and yeah she did that and she felt indeed that the parasites simply left her and they went into this bar where there were yeah lots of people uh, yeah drinking and it was a yeah basically a bar where there's mainly office workers, uh, yuppies and uh, yeah, people like that who are also very much in the habit of um, yeah, pretending more than being. So they're much more at attractive to parasites than she was. So the parasites will of course latch onto any source of food but if they find an easier source of food they tend to jump from one person to another. It also means that if you are in contact with um, such a person who might frequent such, uh, such bars or offices, that it can be a little bit risky to really uh, make a very intense contact with that person. And the greater degree of, uh, of intimacy, the bigger the risk of picking up a parasite. If you see them across the street and you wave hello to them, well, of course, because of your attention you make a little contact with them but that's usually not enough for a parasite to really be able to seize the opportunity but if you spend some time talking with them you shake hands you give them a hug give them a kiss well then there's already yeah a very good opportunity for the parasite because of this close contact to jump over and if you're having for instance uh, uh, sexual contact then 
yeah, often people will start to share parasites, just like they would um, share physical diseases. So it can uh, really be a problem if your partner, for instance, um, yeah, drinks a lot and gathers a lot of parasites onto themselves. That, in a way, the sex um, can be so yeah, uh, heavy or polluting for your energy body because of these parasites that also your sex life will tend to go downhill if uh, yeah, the other person is too affected by parasites and often people don't realize it they're not conscious of why they're avoiding intimacy with uh, with their partners but this can be one of the reasons and often if that partner can just then purify themselves also the quality of the relationship will uh, will improve uh, vastly so we talked a little bit of uh, about the how to avoid, but there are also certain actions you can do to um, yeah, minimize the effect that these parasites can have on you. Uh, most parasites, they um, work by creating a certain atmosphere. And because of this atmosphere, of this yeah, heavy energy in a certain location, you in a way breathe in this heavy energy and you adapt to the atmosphere, to the place you're in, so your own energy goes down as well. So if you're in a place with a low energy, you also lower your own energy. If you're in a place with high energy, you raise your own energy. So one of the easiest ways to yeah, get rid of parasites um, is in a way to go to a place where they cannot feed. So if you have a nice church or temple or holy place or a place in nature you can go to um, your energy will go much higher and because these parasites cannot consume this high energy you in a way become inedible to them so they will leave you and probably um, yeah, they can wait outside of course while you're in the place but anyway for the moment they will yeah, leave you alone um, and yeah, they will have to wait until your energy comes down enough before they can feed on you. So keeping your energy high and going to places with a high energy can help to combat the effects of these energetic parasites. This creation of, um, yeah, in a way, uh, a trap where this, there is a low energy, this is usually done in the places where you spend most of the time and where you're most vulnerable. And typically this would be the bedroom. Because while you're asleep, you're just in a way um, relaxed, but also adapting yourself to the energy around you. So you're in a way resetting your energy while you sleep. So if the bedroom has a very negative low energy, then also your energy level will yeah, more or less go to the bedroom level. So this is the most interesting place for them to create a negative energy. But energy itself can also be transformed. So running water, um, burning fires, uh, these things can help to purify the energy. So this negative energy there in a way spewing out to create a negative atmosphere is then in a way being burned up or flushed away by the water. So typically also bathrooms and kitchens tend to have a very pure energy because there is a lot of running water there which takes away all this energetic residue these um, yeah, little parasitical spirits can build up. So and there's also then two types of parasites. You have t parasites, these are the most common, which live just in one place and they feed off the energy which is generated by that place. So they create a place with a heavy energy. People come there, they also go in a heavy energy and they emanate more heavy energy. So the place becomes more and more negative and they're just maintaining the place and feeding off this negative energy which is fed by the people who fall into their traps. And much more rare, so I would say like maybe 20% of the parasites are really connected to a specific person. And they're just fo yeah, in the person's aura and following them around wherever they go. So you might also find that Gosh, if I'm in this room, I always feel sad or afraid. But if I'm 
somewhere else in the kitchen or in the bathroom I don't feel that. This is a very clear indication that there are parasites in that specific room and you can of course have it cleansed professionally by a person who specializes in that but um, there's also these little things you can do yourself like leaving the lights on, uh, burning fire, uh, using enough water uh, certain types of incense might also help to, in a way, create an energetic atmosphere they cannot feed on. And usually within a few weeks, usually two or three weeks, these parasites will just leave because uh, otherwise the option would be for them to starve. So they have a little bit of stamina, but not really a lot. Um, Another thing you can do if you have more personal parasites who are really influencing your thoughts and emotions all the time is to try to um, disrupt their influence. Because it takes them quite some effort to create an emotion or thought in you. And if you are in a way constantly distracting yourself from these negative thoughts by, for instance, reading a book, um, watching a series on TV, um, or any other activity, playing a game on your computer, um, it is not very worthwhile because they create this negative thought but yeah, two minutes later you're already distracted so before they can reap the benefits from their efforts yeah, the energy is already gone again. So these are also ways you can in a way, just tire them out and often these more personally connected um, spirits, they don't have as much stamina as the spirits yeah, connected to a location. So it is usually more like three to five days which you need to uh, get rid of those spirits. More importantly, you can um, try not to repress yourself and learn to work with your emotions. Every thing, every thought, every memory, every feeling is an energy. And your spirit um, is able to transform all these energies, so you can shape them in whatever you want. And even a so-called negative emotion like fear or anger or sadness it does not exist to torture you, to hurt you, or it is there to serve you. But you have to learn how to use it in the correct way, um, how to master um, this energy and also to transform it if you don't need it anymore. If you have anger but you don't need the anger more, okay, transform the anger into something else. If you have sadness, you don't need the sadness anymore, transform it into something else. And we'll work a little bit with that in the meditation I'll be showing in the next video.